Edo, and I'm back with another episode of Talking Fun with Edo. For today's guest, we have Malik. And now we'll get started with the interview. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 14th episode here. Wait a minute. 15th episode <laughs> here with uh, my eighth podcast guest. Malik, how hey. are you doing on this fine day? I'm doing all right. So, um, how did you, uh, where are you from, by the way, as we're starting? I was born in New York, and I moved to North Carolina around the third grade. And so I've been living in North Carolina until I moved down here from college. It's interesting you're from New York, because there was also a guest I have mentioned previously in I feel like you've seen him a little bit too. He's really a big, huge fan of anime and Japanese music, and also Korean music. His name is Noel's Comics. No, <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. Like his link will be in here, and you know you're all free to watch it. Speaking of which, how did you get into gaming? I've always enjoyed gaming. Like back when I was living in New York, like most of my like hobbies were just playing video games. So like I had inspiration when I was playing like an old Dragon Ball game on the GameCube. And so like, huh, maybe I can make something like this. And so I got into game development. Do you remember like what was like the first game you made? Um the first game, it was I had like a, a few projects. Like but I was starting one, like before I attended full sale, but then I didn't finish it because college I wasn't able to go back to it and so I finished another game project before I finished that first one and it was like um I worked with a team it was like a asymmetrical hack and slash game where you just kill as many gob like goblins skeletons and slime and all that stuff until like you get to the boss and win before it was like there was no like one condition you just have to survive but then they added a boss and so like okay we got one condition now all right. Then is I heard you made a Mugen game. Yeah, Mug. That was my first um, project that was able to finish. Gotcha. Now I did, and but I was having trouble because um, I was attending college. I learned how to make an installer. It's like when you like go on Steam and you want to install a game. That's what I'm talking about. The problem is like I, the game was like really big. It was like eight gigabytes. So like I couldn't. Posted on um, itch, itch.io, where that the requirement is one gigabyte, mm. and so I tried my best trying like research how to like compress it into smaller, but I just couldn't. So I no have no choice but to split the game into four pieces, and so they have to like um, try to put it to, yeah, yeah together. So like they this. have to do it. Yeah, but they they have no problem like unzipping all of them and like making the game. Understandable. Um, on that note, um, I've heard that you're a really big anime fan. Yeah. And I would like to know, on that case, uh, what is your first and what is your favorite anime? First, Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I played the Dragon Ball game before I watched the anime because we didn't, wasn't, like, we really didn't have internet or cable. Right. So we've just been playing the games. So my favorite anime... I am not sure. I'm, I'm probably just going to say Dragon Ball. <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, my very first is uh, Hamtaro. And I definitely would say for the same answer as you, not sure. Because there are a lot of good ones and there are a lot of bad ones. Don't worry, there is nothing on the screen that will show that. <laughs> Unless you guys want to make a meme of it, I allow that too. But anyway, speaking of which, the reason why I've mentioned that is... Um, Hamataro was my first anime 20 years ago. And the thing that was really interesting that I've learned, again, about Noel and another YouTube channel called International Channel for Life, which they have, like, a lot of J-pop, K-pop, and a lot of anime stuff. Uh, 
20 years ago, they said this was, like, the anime invasion or just, like, the Asian invasion of, like, a lot. Of, <laughs> yes, they did call it that. And it's just interesting that it was like that. And 20 years ago, that was the first time I saw Hamtaro. The re- when I realized it was different, which it's a video you guys have seen at this point called How Blank Created Blank of Azuma Dial. That and Boba Bowl, when I realized uh-huh. it's like, hey, you know, these cartoons are very different in the way they make it, you know, here in the United States. Even my favorite one, Ed Ed and Eddie, it's not even from America, it's from Canada. So that was... I had, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> We're all learning something every day. So on top of that, um, do you have any favorite uh, Japanese musical artists? Japanese musical? It could be a group, too. Um, there's this one um singer um I forgot her name Lisa she was Lisa, like doing, okay. she was doing some of the um Sora line openings yes, and yes I really yes. loved those I, I and if I remember correctly she did one not recent but like one of the first seasons of uh, Demon Slayer one of uh, the themes yeah so, oh, oh, she also oh. did season two I believe yeah she also I, I mean, research so she did the movie as well gotcha I often um. Uh, fair note is that there's a group, Japanese group called Inflow, and there was a member in a group that was named Lisa, so I thought <laughs> it was her, but two different people. Um, for your fir- would, it, would it be your first artist as well? No, my first. I'm not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's, um, and on that note, uh, Korean artists uh, for K pop, uh, any. Favorite or first for those as well? For K pop, I haven't really listened that much to K pop, but I have recently. Mm-hmm. I haven't listened to The Boys because this webcomic, um, Solo Leveling, is right. getting an anime adaptation. So, like, the OST like just dropped. So, I like, I gotta listen to that. All right. Um, speaking on those notes, is uh, in the world of uh, when you go out in the world, you like to would you like to game all over or like make games for like people like all over the world or stuff like that? You know? Yeah, like my games, like how I want to make games, they're gonna be like action based mostly. But I'm also like working with um a friend. She mm-hmm. wants to like make a like you know heard this game called AI Dungeon. I've heard of it. Sounds familiar. yeah. So like a uh, randomly generated like scenarios and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, like, she wanted like have like the characters be from like anime character. Like, she wanted like Grim in it from Bleach and all that stuff in right. the game. Right. Like, different scenarios and all that stuff. And I'm like, huh? Maybe I'm, I can not only work on like action games. Maybe like somewhere along like dating sims and all that stuff. Right. <laughs> but then I'm gonna have to play dating sim to see like how it works and all that stuff. <laughs> well, and the good news, you know, my sister is in gaming, so. You guys really may have a lot in common. Uh, so, is there um, anywhere in the world would you like to travel to outside of the United States? Or you're just cool right here? I'm cool right here. Like, I haven't really given that much thought. Right. I would, <laughs> as a normal person, would say, either like, Hawaii or Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, what would uh, your favorite food be? Pizza. <laughs> like I mostly enjoy Italian foods, like lasagna, gotcha. okay. pasta, mizzidi. Gotcha. Um. Hmm. Uh I think. Wait. Oh no. no, no. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> just had to, like I said, a lot of these are like very, very um, non-scripted. So, um, is there um, what is like the ways you want people to remember you by? I know it feels a little <laughs> early, but just just like like just at any point, like it's just like when you go off in the future and stuff. Like, how would you want people to remember your legacy as like just a gamer or just something more? Somebody more. It's mostly like someone like trustworthy. Like even when like when I'm like making games, I'm, my future plans are like having my own game um game company. And so like 
and there's like a lot of game comp- game companies that people can't really trust, like Blizzard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one talks about Blizzard because I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah. That's so, uh, like I want to I want to have a game co- um game com- um ah, game company that no one can like have to like worry about. So like I have I'm, my game idea is gonna be like really sec- like have great security. Like you can only have like one account. Like if someone try to get into that account, you'll know and like. All that stuff. Oh, okay. So like a security person that. Yeah. Like, All right. That's when that's... I was playing. When I was playing Wizard One Hundred One back in the day. Right. Like, um, wow. <laughs> but you can only like log in into your computer. If you try to log into your account and someone else's computer, you, right. your account will get just like locked. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted like I thought that was cool. So I wanted like have something like that in my um, dream game. Okay. My dream game is like MMORPGs. Really open All world. right. Okay. Well, everyone, that wraps up everything of what we have to do. Thanks again for coming over, Malik, and I will see you guys all later. Goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Um, For the previous work that Malik worked on from my last channel was the Flinko video and also the recent video that you guys have saw of how Azuma created Dio. And now for the shoutouts we have for this episode, for our eighth guest is not just Malik himself, but also Ethan Nice, Riv, Spare Known Eight, and also Mac Tack. And like usual, um, I'll see you guys later. But before we get to that. Um, other videos that are coming up is, of course, yes, another episode of the podcast, but also for my main channel is the fourth anniversary special. Until then, I got to get to bed for that special. So, until next time, goodbye. Talking from the end.